So we've just seen the first trailer of The Odyssey from Christopher Nolan and there's been a lot of debate online about the authenticity of the armor, whether or not it makes sense for the time the story is set in. So what did ancient Greek armor really look like during the time of The Odyssey? What we see in the films looks closer to styles we see in later periods of Greek history that wouldn't have existed until hundreds, sometimes even a thousand years after the event events of the Iliad and the Odyssey. The Iliad and the Odyssey are two epic poems that describe the events surrounding the Trojan War. They're called epics because they focus on the deeds of legendary heroes from a distant past. And this was something that already felt ancient to the ancient Greeks of the classical age. The Iliad is set at the end of the Trojan War and covers the last two months of the conflict. And the Odyssey is all about Odysseus's journey home after fighting in the Trojan War and it took him 10 years to get home back to his home island of Ithaca. And in the Odyssey we get a lot of additional details about the Trojan War through flashbacks from Odysseus. For example, it's in the Odyssey that we hear about the Trojan horse, how the Greeks finally managed to enter the city, and it's honestly pretty cool to see some of those flashbacks already being depicted in the film. Both of these stories are attributed to Omeros or Homer, who lived about 500 years after the events of the Trojan War. But there's recent discoveries that show Homer knew a lot more about the time of the Trojan War than we originally thought. The Trojan War probably took place sometime between 1210 and 1180 BC. And we can pinpoint it to this range because there is evidence of a city that they identified as being Troy that was destroyed by a raging fire around the year 1180 BC. They discovered weapons, arrowheads, spearheads, sling stones and unburied human remains and that points to a sacking of some kind occurring on the site that was a sudden and violent attack. And there's also evidence of towns in the vicinity of Troy being completely abandoned around the same time, consistent with an invasion. The weapons, armor, and the society described in the Iliad and the Odyssey match the Mycenaean society at the end of the Bronze Age. Some people regard the Trojan War and the story of the Odyssey completely as a myth. One of the main reasons is they've uncovered very few weapons from the site of Troy itself compared to other ancient cities. But we have to remember Troy was not an undisturbed site. It was one of the most popular tourist destinations of the ancient world and was dug up and excavated over the centuries by rulers like Alexander the Great and Emperor Augustus. And Bronze Age warfare is actually very well documented. Archaeologists have found that a lot of the weapons and armor described by Homer in the stories were actually used in the Bronze Age. For example, they discovered a fully intact suit of ancient Mycenaean armor at a site called Dendra in the Argolis region of the Peloponnese and it dates to around 1400 BC. So it's an armor directly from the late Bronze Age, very close to the time of the Trojan War and the life of Odysseus. To put it into perspective, warriors in Greece would have been wearing armor like this at the same time as the new kingdom in Egypt and these worlds would have been very connected. The armor weighs around 18 kilograms about 40 pounds, and it probably belonged to a high-status Mycenaean warrior. For a long time, people thought this armor must have been ceremonial, mainly because it looks so bulky. But when researchers started building and testing replicas, it turned out that it was actually very functional. They proved this in 2024 when researchers tested a replica of the armor in a Bronze Age combat scenario. They took a group of special forces soldiers and wore replicas of the armor for about 11 hours and were able to complete all of their tests without any issues. Despite its cumbersome appearance, it is not only flexible enough to allow every movement of a warrior on foot, but it's also resilient enough to protect the wearer from most blows. The researchers argue that the findings from these experiments show the Mycenaeans had such a powerful impact on the Eastern Mediterranean 
in part because of their armor technology. It was something unique to them. We also have evidence of different types of helmets and headgear from the Bronze Age, both from depictions in ancient art and from actual examples they've found in burial tombs. One of the most unique Bronze Age helmets that we know of is called the Boar Tusk Helmet. These were used in Mycenaean Greece roughly 3,500 years ago. When they first discovered fragments of these helmets, archaeologists weren't sure exactly what to make of them because they didn't look like anything else the ancient Greeks produced. And the interesting thing about this helmet is that Homer describes Odysseus wearing a boar tusk helmet during a night raid and it matches the exact description that we see here. Homer even goes into detail and explains how they make them. They needed around 40 to 50 boars to make a single helmet. And it means that whoever owned them wasn't an ordinary soldier. They would have had to be wealthy and been able to hunt. They were definitely helmets of high status individuals, but they disappear completely after the Bronze Age and are not used in later periods. But if Odysseus is depicted wearing any helmet at all, it probably should be this one because that's the only helmet Homer ever describes Odysseus wearing. Nobody knows why, but shortly after the Trojan War, Mycenaean civilization collapses and disappears completely from the historical record. They have believed to have been wiped out as part of the wider Bronze Age collapse, which also brought down several other major civilizations across the Eastern Mediterranean. This was caused by a combination of factors, including wars, migrations, and invasions. And some scholars link it to a people that the ancient Egyptians referred to as the Sea Peoples. But this is an entirely different topic in itself. Because of this sudden collapse, Mycenaean culture was lost. And later Greeks who lived in the time of Homer, well, they lived in a very different world. And for them, the remains of the Bronze Age felt like a distant, almost mythical past. When they looked at the massive stone walls of Mycenaean palaces, they believed they could only have been built by giants, which is why we still call them Cyclopean walls today. Archaeology shows that the Late Bronze Age had very vibrant, advanced civilizations that had their own distinct style of warfare. All you have to do is look at the remains that they found in not only Greece, but in some of the other nearby empires like the Hittites, the Assyrians, and the ancient Egyptians. I can understand why Christopher Nolan has gone the way he has with this movie, because a lot of ancient Greek art depicting the Trojan War shows warriors in classical style Greek armor from a later time. The armor of their own time, actually. That's because these artists were projecting their own worldview onto these stories. They were imagining Achilles and Odysseus the way they knew warriors to look. So if Christopher Nolan is going down that route and showing the Odyssey the way ancient Greeks themselves at later times might have imagined it, that's a very valid creative choice. But in my opinion, it would be a lot cooler if they took a bit of inspiration from the actual time period that the Odyssey takes place in. Obviously, I don't think Odysseus should be wearing a full dendra panoply of armor, but maybe something inspired by it, something that would make sense for a king to be wearing on a voyage home, you know, after fighting in a war. Maybe some middle ground between what they've actually found, these historical examples and what they have in the movie and, and finding a middle ground between the two, that would be the best option. There's a lot of directions they could go with the armor. They didn't have to play it so safe. They could have taken a bit more inspiration from the actual time period because there's plenty of examples that they can look at and get, gain inspiration from. That would make it much more immersive and feel much more authentic rather than just doing the same old generic look that we've seen over and over again. That's just my opinion on the matter. If you found this video interesting, please don't forget to hit subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.